what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump into the product and I'm going to show you the data room. So as a brief introduction, Answerata is probably most famous amongst the deal teams that you guys would work in for producing an online data room. We would be used to disclose documents in an M&A or capital raise process probably 80% of the time on any deals you're working on in this region, Asia, Oceania, Australia. Um, however, there is a new element inside this product that a lot of the people senior to you won't know about because it's come after their time in your position, uh, and that is the workflow tool. So the workflow tool is meant to solve that problem, which, which basically exists because every firm that you work with has their own internal collaboration tools, and we're not allowed to invite co-advisors or clients into them quite often. What that means is your client, who probably uses um, product management tools like monday.com and all sorts of things in their professional life, is suddenly thrust back into 25 years earlier uh, when they come into the deal landscape because they're trying to manage everything from an inbox. And you guys probably already got a fairly hectic inbox. You know what that looks like. But we are going to look at tools that you can leverage from the existing stack. Workflow is one of them. The workflow is very simply a demilitarized zone that the lawyers, the bankers, and the accountants can all work on together with the clients to build one single deal dash of the process. And the intention behind this is that it can be very, very quickly customized from the existing deal trackers that you're using. So if you happen to be uh, working on a deal checklist with your, um, with your process already, you're, you're live, you're mid-deal, and, uh, and you suddenly realize it's talking a bit too hard, one of the things that we could do for you is give you the option to upload this into the interface and immediately begin editing uh, in real time so that everybody can see. So for example, what I've got on screen here is an internal issues tracker. Uh, it's got dummy data in there, but it should look highly real <laughs> uh, because it is based on, on real things that we've seen. So if, for example, you, uh, you are used to um, seeing deal trackers from law firms, you might notice that the big long cells in our system, they've, be, they've become a little bit easier to filter. And we can very quickly say, all right, I've uploaded my spreadsheet. The system has converted it into these color flag statuses. So I no longer have to use my extensive legal degree or, or commerce degree learning how to shade a cell red or yellow. The system will do that for you. So there's something straight away. And because it's uploaded into the system, when that managing director asks you to show me everything that's at risk and behind schedule, you can find that in two clicks. Now, I raise the idea of a managing director or could be a partner very deliberately because a lot of the times you will be their interface to the data room rather than them and they're going to expect you to supply them with an Excel sheet. So what happens if we load our Excel sheet into this system and we begin running the process instead by directing everybody to complete their answers in this interface so the whole team can see it in real time? And then somebody asks you to email them a document. Everything still exports out into Excel. If there's anybody that wishes to keep an eye on this process at an arm's length by receiving an email from you, that's one click to have the most accurate tracker up to date to the second in their hands. That's what I've done there for you. Uh, other things that we can do the second we translate something like a request for information list into this online landscape instead of trying to manually update the document and then put the document somewhere else. It's online. So you can add things like document columns into your, into your spreadsheet tracker and it will allow you to upload the documents directly next to the line item where we're, line item where we're talking about it. So for example, if you've requested that your client provide to you the management structure diagram, they can literally come in here, add the management structure diagram and, uh, and tag you in to let you know that it's there. John Danger would <laughs> be my alter ego for this. Um, and we, we might uh, update the status to in progress. So the whole idea of this is it should look and feel familiar enough that anybody who's asked you to use a deal tracker can look at this on the screen and see that you are in fact using a deal tracker, but suddenly the emotional relief for your client, and you can see the, the pain just sort of, the shoulders just sort of drop when they see it, uh, is greatly relieved because everything is now in one spot um, and they don't have to go chasing through their inbox. It's, it's a really simple change. Most of the efficiency you're getting is by centralizing all your stakeholders together and allowing them to just collaborate transparently. Now, there are going to be work streams that we don't necessarily want everyone involved in. I think NDA and process letter tracking is one where we want everybody involved, to be honest. If you are the analyst or the, the lawyer that's been given the job of letting buyers into a data room, uh, that's a lot of liability to be on you, especially if other advisors are inviting those buyers into the room. 
uh, or, or, uh, or sort of a broad that buys in the deal. So what I suggest here is if you just set up a very simple grid, you can create new columns or new tabs by just using the plus button here, and you can build them tab by tab, or we can upload them straight from an Excel file that you've built yourself. If you're somebody that's very comfortable with building things in Excel, by all means, build in Excel, click add from Excel, and we'll allow you to import your template straight into uh, the system so that it looks the way that you want it to look. So if I was to say, grab one of my internal checklists, it will automatically map um, the types of columns that I've got in my checklist, which I will I'll put on the screen first so I can show you what it looks like. It's gonna give you a bit of a before and after. There you go, there's a checklist that I've got. I've uploaded into the system. It's identified uh, that the status column is gonna be a status column. And then I will import. And it's gonna give me a new tab that looks exactly what my spreadsheet looked like, but now it looks like it's a part of a custom interface. So these are very, very quick to build, very, very quick to use. And, um, and I was mentioning before that you might want to control who sees which term. So this one, this one is an internal checklist. It's just for me and my team. And so when I go to the tab where it says share, by default, anything uh, that you add is, is just visible to you. You might say, look, this is really just for me and the other lawyers and they can all manage it, but I'm going to keep this out of sight of my client. So the idea is you can actually build an interface for everything that you've got to work on and just keep the client or the other work strings focused to what they have to work on by using that share button. Um, the NDA and process letter tracking though, I did mention that's one of those exceptions where I think it's really helpful for everyone to see. I was mentioned there's a quite a lot of liability on letting somebody into a data ring. Have they signed their process letter? Do we have the, the right sheet in place with them? You can set up a requirement where if anybody asks you to add a bidder into the room, you ask them to supply their, their signed documents before they get in there. So it's a very, very quick way to build a system. Some other things that I find very impressive, or rather I find the end clients find very impressive. And this is why I'm so delighted that so many of you guys who are practitioners have joined in today. This is a real opportunity for you to start differentiating to your clients why a deal is different when you run it. Uh, because obviously if we're in this business, we're all in the business of trying to um, get to partner, get to executive director, um, build our own client base, right? Uh, and I can tell you that it's somebody who runs a smooth, efficient process that's highly visible to the client, it's going to come up looking pretty good every time. So here's a, here's a simple trick you can do. I've got the key milestones tab here. I literally made that by just clicking new tab, um, which you can add from our own template library, a template library that you've built yourself, or just by clicking new tab and building it out column by column. And what I did was I just went and grabbed the milestones that I mentioned in the process letters that we signed with our client. I pop them in here. I've added a comments column that I called update so that we can keep uh, providing latest update. I've added a status column and a date range. Responsible column, that was basically I used the user type. Um, so if you use a user column, it will automatically grab everybody who has access to this tab and put them on a drop down list. When you tag this person, they get an email uh, that you've given them the task. It's that simple. So you can get up to speed with this in about five seconds and teach your colleagues <laughs> in the next 10 um, and, and it'll be great. But the cool thing about something like this milestones tab is I've put in a date against each of these tasks, which will automatically translate itself to a Gantt chart. So keep in mind here the, the flow of how you've gotten to this point. Somebody's asked you to go and supply a data room because that's what they're thinking. Hey, we're gonna run a deal, we need a data room. You can go to the answer a quote page and generate this room for free, even before your client has decided on the provider they're gonna use because with us, we don't start charging you until the first guest user logs in. So if, you, you're, if you've got six days for your client to go ahead and sign off on a, a data in quote, you can actually be using that six days to work to set out your planning. And if somebody decides not to go with Ansarada, doesn't matter. Um, you can just shut it down, export all your documents and your work back out and carry on. But if they do, you put in your uh, your milestones here and suddenly you're not the person who has to be uh, creating a Gantt chart each week to send around in an email update. Everybody can see that live in real time in the interface. It looks far more impressive to the client and hey, it takes the admin work off you, which I think is great for centralizing all your stakeholders in the same place. Um, and these are all drag and drop as well. So if you do have to move the dates around, it'll actually update the dates back on the table as well. One of the nifty tricks that we have in there. Um, Things to know about using this as a way of gathering documents. 
If you have an RFI template that your team uses quite a bit, generally what we would see is your RFI is probably the same 90% of the time, and then you would just add sort of a few, a few rows. I would encourage you to save that as a template. You can see here, I have got a template library. There's mine there. There's some ones I've collaborated on with, with other clients. Obviously, I won't have access to yours. You won't have access to theirs. This is just something that I've worked on. And um, and you can begin, you can even begin that today with that quote page that I showed you. Go up, set up a room, and start loading in the RFIs and checklists that you normally use and keep them as your own library because they'll be part of your profile. And next time you get added to a room, you can just click load from template. So for example, if I hit actions, sorry, add from template. I can come in and say, oh, I want to use my EOI summary template that I, I saved after Joel's demo. And there we go. It's a preloaded freeze framing's already done for you. So if you haven't learned how to do freeze formatting in Excel, you don't have to. The system's going to do that for you. And you can go ahead and add additional columns from our room functionality like that. It's that simple to build something. Um, those will be sort of the, the key features. I did mention with it in the RFI process, if we're using this as a method of collecting documents with your client, working off your own RFI template, you can use these controls to set up an approval process. Who's signed off on this document? Is it ready to go in the finalized index? And something that I hope will be very welcome to anybody in here who's ever had to build a data room index off a spreadsheet RFI before, you can use the move documents function to copy the documents that are approved and are ready for sign off based on what you've done in your, your table there into the index and it will make the folder structure for you based off whatever your RFI had. So if oh, the only reason to use this was simply to create, save yourself manually creating a folder structure one day, you'd still, you'd still benefit for about five hours on some of the deals that I've seen. Um, I've been with Ansarada since the very beginning. I was the third employee of Ansarada. We worked out the other day, I've, I've done personally close to 11,000 deals. So when I'm talking about what I see people do, I'm seeing a lot of people do this at scale. And there's a real opportunity for everybody attending today to make a big name for themselves by simply running a smooth and more transparent process that impresses clients.